We missing all of you, all right? Y'all have a good uh, experience, all right? Hearing the word of God on that particular day, as well as on Good Friday. Do not just let your heart be stirred up with human sentiment, but you see, open your eyes and open the eyes of your heart to realize how great God is. The transcending greatness of God in Christ is beyond our, our illustration. I tell you something, alright? I often ponder, I often ponder, whenever I go for, you know, whenever I'm in the open space, I look up to the sky. I must say I'm impressed by all the human monuments. Now the latest one in KL is the TRX, the 118. You know, sometimes I drive past there. I have not set my foot there, but I did drive past there. I'm amazed how human could come up with such technology and build such a majestic tower. But as I look beyond, I am speechless. I am clueless. That God created the universe with Milky Way, with galaxies. Sometimes I think to myself, God, why are you wasting so much of your energy? Why are you taking so much of trouble? Isn't it a waste? You create so many things in the universe. Then I remember, as I revisit Genesis, when God created everything from nothing. Then I went on to study again Psalm 19, Psalm 119. I am humble. I am humble. To bring the matter closer to home, God, why do you create a flaming fireball like the sun just to keep us alive? You see, even though I know God's word by His grace, to a certain extent, I won't say all, but still sometimes, often, from time to time, I still measure God against human. No. It doesn't take extra trouble for God to create the universe. The sun. No, 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 no. For Him, He spoke a word. Everything came to exist. You understand? That's why I titled this to this morning sermon The Transcending. In Mandarin, Chao Yue. Tada Wei Da Chao Yue. It's beyond human imagination. That's the God that we are here to worship this morning. And that's the God who spoke the word and recorded and revealed in scripture now. We are going to hear. So may I speak fearlessly. All programs are good. All human achievements are good. In fact, I am amazed by some of the people who do such powerful things. But I humble myself. As I grow older and older, I say, Lord, you are beyond imagination. Even as much as we understand the scripture, but from time to time, we still think so small of him, right? Don't you? Listen, I beg of you, listen. Just in case this is my last <laughs> Don't worry, no, no, I'm not going anywhere. I'll be here. Uh, Tony would like to see me more often, right? Tony, uh, <laughs> Now listen. For God who created everything that is, creature as small as a worm. In fact, the Bible spoke of us as a worm, isn't it? You are a worm, you are a worm. You are a worm. We know there's no value, you know that we, we are we are like morning dew. When you wake up in the morning, you see some power on the leaf, and then by the time sun rises, everything is gone. And yet this God revealed Himself in the person of Jesus Christ. That is what we are here all about. Now 
I don't care about your personal life, your achievement, your profession, your career, your family relationship, your spouse. I, 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 I do care about all those things. I, I give a lot of counseling to a lot of people who wanted it or needed it. But I always go back to the principle in the scripture. All these are important to us, right? We get sick and then we are disappointed, we get offended and all that. All these are parallel of mine. They're important, right? They are personally applicable to all of us. But never tell us, never tell us, the truth of God give us hope. We are not to do many things, but we are to become. It's amazing. Don't worry about God taking so much of trouble, so much of effort. It's not a way. He created everything just by speaking the word. I want to give God a big hand. He deserves it. really deserves it. Now, I want to say something to all of you, okay? Now, um, I have taught the book of Revelation here. Eight months, you know. Uh, I would say I was able to do a real dialogue, but at least uh, a, a deep study of the book of Revelation. Now, I ponder again in chapter 5. See, uh, there was a scroll, it's the heavenly imagery. Now, you, you must begin to imagine. Okay? Now, I'm not asking you to fantasize, but I'm asking you as you read the book of Revelation, your mind scope must be so huge. You must read it as un and understand it. It was written 2,000 years ago. Alright? And the image, the imagery, give us a peep into what actually happened. Now, in the book of the Revelation chapter 5 here, it's a scroll. You know the scroll? You roll it up, alright? God's future prophecy about Christ, about the coming and the end of the world and the new, he new heaven and earth is all contained in the scroll. But too bad, nobody is qualified to open it. John wept. Because he wanted so much to know the truth about Christ, about God, about the coming end time, about future, about our hope, about the new heaven and earth. Now let me read you just a few two verses here. Angel said, don't weep. Do not weep. See? The Lion of the tribe of Judah. That's the title ascribed to Jesus Christ. Okay, in the Old Testament. The root of David has triumphed. The word triumph is not just what your, your, your name, your badminton match, you know that. Triumph. Triumph carry a connotation of final victory. All right. He's able to open the scroll and his seven seals. Then John wrote, I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain. Slain means killed. All right. Standing in the center of the throne, he was standing in the center of the throne, the encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. Now, I want you to spot two, two uh, title here, ascribed to Christ here. The Lion of the tribe of Judah. But at the same time, he is a lamb. A lamb has no defense. It's toothless. It's all at the mercy of man. Now, you see these two titles ascribe to Jesus Christ. Sometimes I think Christ, God in Christ, is both strong 
like lion. Would you dare to go near a lion? You would not dare, right? Any one of you dare to go and stand near a, di- a lion? All right. Uh, but you would dare, right? If it comes to a land, right? A small little sheep. You will even carry. You see, God projected Himself in the book of Revelation. God in Christ is the lion. Known as the junk, the king of the jungle. But at the same time, he's soft, he's kind, he's gracious. That's why he ran on the way and then to be killed on the cross for God's honor. But you benefited it, and I benefited it. Please remember. You know, this morning as I worship, I was looking, right? We, we all have to have both. Sometimes we have to be hard, right? Sometimes we have to be soft like a sponge. You know? One of the sisters here, every time I talk to her, she feels like crying. That is good. I admire that because that is the, the heart of tenderness. But I also want to warn you, like a sponge, huh? When you wash dishes, right? You absorb the water, put in soap, and then you wash it, isn't it, right? But right after the dirt caught in the spout, you spit this out, isn't it? So be careful, all of you, right? You have, I, 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 you know, it's good to see you with a tender heart. Tender heart, you know, like, like, like a, like a, like a, 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 a soap bar, you know? When the sun comes out, the word of God comes upon you, you melt. But don't be like a soy, you know, uh, you know? You know, sometimes you get some mud and then you put under the sun, it becomes what? Hardened, isn't it? So please, listen to me. It's good to have a tender heart, right? You know, encircle yourself or, 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 or extend yourself, fret your friendship to all the people that are around you. Good to be in fellowship, right, Dr. Kwan? Good. But please remember, you must squeeze the dirt out. Well, listen to me, you know, I can, it could be a message within what I'm saying. Don't do that. Don't do that. Be at the light. Where is dark? You need to be the light. You understand, right? You, you are, we are all adult enough to know positive elements and negative elements. The church needs that, right? right? Okay, so it's good to have a tender heart. But please, like a sponge, after you wash everything, you have to squeeze out the dirt. Okay, now, let, let me continue. Now, when I read this passage, you know, with me, sometimes, you know, I remember the the long-running series on TV, The Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> Putting the beauty and the beast together. Now, this is an insufficient description. But anyway, and anyway, I would like to say that is my reason of saying this is God is stern and holy. No one is allowed to distract him from his nature. But at the same time, he's gracious, he's long-suffering, he's patient with all of us. When he calls you, he is patient. Right? He calls you, he is patient. He knows you are like a baby. You need to be fed constantly, not just by progress, but by the word, the feeding of the word of God, rightly dividing, dividing the word and be fed. And I guarantee you, your life perspective will change. And next time when you look up in the sky, you will see beyond Twin Tower. You will see beyond all those. But you will see a God. Just a word from you. Everything is great. How can I not worship you? Such a world I am. 
a dust, a morning dew, and yet you sang Christ. And eventually die on the cross, take our place, and you ascend. But help us more so think of this. He's coming back. Now, I would like to speak or oh, at least point to you some verses. Alright, not much, but just some verses to stir, stir up your holy fear and your godly soul. Now, in Jeremiah, right after the book of Isaiah, 100 years later, Jeremiah was handpicked by God. He commissioned him to speak to Judah and all the cities within it. Jeremiah's life was terrible. Not only God commissioned him to speak powerful truth, knowing that he will be rejected and assassination attempted on him. Not only that, God assigned him to speak his word at the same time give him some visual aid. You know visual aid? There was, that's what we call a lock. You know, a plank, huh? right? You put your hole inside. You put your hole through it. Something like when you see those Chinese, Chinese movie, those who are to, on the way to be beheaded, you know, you will put a blind, isn't that right? And then you like All these missionaries are to, are to make it even more powerful and more straightforward visually. And Jeremiah didn't like that. In fact, he was picked right in when he was, he was still in the mother. I pity this kind of life and I said, Lord, do. But that's exactly what God did. That's exactly what God did. And after 2,000 years later, a few thousand years later, we are still reading the narrative in the book of Jeremiah. God said, Tell the people. Now, this is the strong side of God. This is the hard part of God. Is not my word like fire? What do you do with fire? You burn something, right? Alright? You cook up something, right? But you boil water with fire or with electricity generated by electricity and vaporize. If you leave the fire continue to be there, the water will be no more. That is to filter up all the dirt. All the impurity. God said, it's not my word like fire. Declares the Lord. The Lord was not saying, well, let me tell you what, uh, my word is like fire. No, it's declared. Declaration basically means statement from king, from a supreme one. When you say, I declare, you are saying that that is the final. There's no debate, there is no challenge. And not only that, isn't my word like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? Remember those days? Not today, our modern world. These are some of the tools that common people use. God said, my word is like fire. It's supposed to burn you up. Get rid of all the impurities. My word is like a hammer. It's supposed to break you. It's supposed to break it to pieces. Then God will take it out and make it whole. If you're not broken, you have nothing to be made whole. Isn't it? Am I right? You don't go and see Dr. Kwan and then Dr. Kwan say, Yes, why are you here? Actually, I'm feeling okay. 
why are you here? Is that right? If you are not broken, you have nothing to be made whole. Please understand, God is hard. Stir. The word catches all is holy. God has got many attributes, characteristics. But the chief one among all is holy. He loves you. He loves him. Yes. Holy love. He grants you grace. Holy grace. Always add a prefix to it. Your entire perspective of life change. You know why? Because humans are expert in taking things for granted. Why like God is gracious? Oh, okay, God is gracious today, tomorrow, and forever. Yes, God is gracious all the time. If not, you probably won't be living now. And you wouldn't have a chance to sit here and hear the word of God from the scripture. How shall I say? God is a, a type of liar. The king fear no one. When the lion is allowed, there will not be any other lion. But it humbled me. It frightened me. But at the same time, I love it when God and in Christ is a lion. A lamb that he knows all of us are vulnerable. He knows all of us if we gather our sin from childhood until now, he will reach his heaven. Right? But Jesus said, I die in your place. If you believe, you shall have eternal life and all the more. Jesus. The lamb, soft and tender, born to this world, and God Himself ready to die once and for all. And this is done in honor of God. Please listen to me, my dear friend. I managed to say hello to most of you, but not all. I know because some of you came late. But never tell us. Even I don't get to say hello to you, I didn't get to shake your hand, it doesn't matter. What is in, what is in water now is, you hear the word of God, let it produce in you repentance. Okay, let's move on. Now here, I double it up from a few verses, you know, uh, in the book of Hebrew, right? This is the hard part. For the word of God is alive. Remember, God's word is alive. It either excuses you, affirm what you are living or doing, or it accuses you. Tony, God's word either accuses you or excuses you. Excuses means, right, in a positive way, that affirm what you are doing, you know, you are going okay, all right. But accuses me, hmm, something is not right. Something is not right. For the word of God is alive. He said it's alive and active. He said alive is not enough. Active. Sharper than any double edged sword. Most of the knife in your house are not double edged. Get a knife with double edged sword. Both sides can cut. It will handle that knife with super care when you wash it. Because there is no unsharp edge that you can put your hand on. Double edge on, right? And when you pull it out, everything will be out. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joys and marrow. Those who have done a bit of study in biology, you know, all this is in your body. Your bone, your marrow, and now it 
come to the spiritual part. It judges the thought and the attitude of the heart. People may not know. People don't really know. But God knows. I'm not advocating perfection. I'm not saying that right after the service or right now, I want to be perfect. You cannot. You can never be perfect. We are trapped in a secular world. Right where the reigning power is still Satan himself. And we are all caught in a in a body. And this body, as Paul put it, it is useless. This body is just a house. Oh I, okay, I would like to use the word tank. You know tank? You know tank? Sometimes you go into sometimes people get married, they will set up a tank, isn't that right? right? And then they will have a their fees there. And then two days later the tank will be what? Taken down. That's why Paul said. The body is like a tent, corruptible. Won't be able to stand many, many temptations, no matter how good you are. But as we tap into the word of God and his principle, we are able to lead to that. Even sometimes when we fail, fail miserably. But God in Christ as a lamb. He is, he has forgiven us. That is the beauty, not the peace. Tell me, are you not grateful? Right? You see, the thought and the attitude of the heart, like I said, direction, not perfection. It's direction, not perfection. As I drove from KL all the way to Solomon, I must know my direction. I look at all the signboard, of course, using now ways and all that. But I still must pay attention, right? right? If not, sometimes you just go to go another way. So, the Word of God in Scripture is the book of truth. It speaks everything that we need in life and life after. To begin with, your perspective about God, about life, must change. Now, the suffering. When Christ died, after three days, he resurrected. He showed himself for a span of time about 40 days. But in particular, he showed himself to his chosen one, his disciples. Because the rest all scattered. Jesus' disciples, they were all very afraid because they would be the next to be arrested and killed. So they all hide in a room or in a certain place. When Christ showed up, he didn't bother to knock on the door because Christ was in a glorified form. He died. He resurrected. His body was in a glorified form, recognizable, but not hindered by any material He just walked right in and showed himself to his disciples. Too bad Thomas was not there. Thomas has got a nickname, the doubter, like some of us. Doubting, doubting. And Jesus took the trouble and show up again. Just to make sure this is recorded in scripture, in the New Testament. When Thomas, and when Jesus saw Thomas, he said this, that is our land God, our God land, our land God. Put your finger here and see my hand. Jesus was not nailed on here, right? It's here. You know, there's a thick bone, this bone here, the base bone. Here. Put your finger here. He invited Thomas to touch him. Put your finger here. 
and reach out your hand and put into my sight. Stop doubting and believe. And believe. Thomas said to him immediately. Some people don't longer to believe, to go into that level of belief. Well, don't, 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 don't give yourself an excuse to do that. Right? But sometimes it does. Okay, Thomas was the second batch among the disciples. And now Jesus bothered to show him. Because why? Jesus has called him personally. Set your hand. Stop doubting and believe and touch. Immediately, immediately, Thomas said, My God and my Lord. My God and my Lord. You know what does that mean? I hope you've been taught the many names of God. Anyway, let's not be too, you know, all this etymological stuff, okay? Just tell you. God is God, the creator God. You know why the word Lord is added here? It becomes personal. It become, it become our authority. Because there are many religions use the word of God. So sometimes the word God has become a generic word. It doesn't mean anything because you have your God, I have my God, under the tree there is God. But here specifically, Thomas said, my Lord and my God. And then Jesus told him, I would like to channel this verse to all of you here. Listen, uh, this is for you, not for Thomas. Jesus told him, <clears throat> because you have seen me, you have believed. Right? Because you have seen me, you have believed. Look at the yellow one. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. This is for the hearers. This is for all of you and for me. Blessed are those who have not seen Christ in person, who have got love, who don't have the time to touch his scar. Just the word of God. With the help of the Holy Spirit, affirmative, affirmative, we choose to believe. Such blessing, this was. Now, let's come to talk a little bit about the soft side of God in Christ. Romans 5. Please, read the book of Romans. It is one of the five New Testament books you must read. Because Paul gave a good analysis of sin of God. And now, it's, it's not that his analysis comes from a college or university. He was, he was empowered by God. Please, read. Right in John in Romans 5 8. But God demonstrates, isn't it? If you are not humbled by this verse, you are a rock that must be broken by this word. That means you are mud. When you come under hot sun, you become harder. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinless, especially unforgiven sinners, Christ died for us. God absolutely has no business in doing that. 
Sometimes I feel like running. Come into his defense. God, why do you do that? Amazing truth here. Yeah. Paul said, we will, we, we, even in, in uh, uh, John Gospel, we die for someone who is righteous. We all, I think many of us are willing to sacrifice for somebody who is honorable, good, and righteous. But God said, that's nothing. You honor your parent, you should. That is the principle of life. That is, they, even small child, you should know. Even traditionalism will teach you that. But are you willing to defend and die for one? Just let me call you here, right? Just bring your, expand your mind. Someone who has been a rapist. Uh, you will definitely say no. But do you know Christ died for some of them? Right? Those who he had predestinated. So amazing. Learn not to think this way. That you are better than the person next to you. That's why the Spirit of God comes to you with his truth. It's not true. It's God somehow in his divine plan and will. He has his eye on you. Not because of what you have done. And surely not because of who you are. So don't ever think of this person is less than me. That's why he said. You know when, when you when you are out there you do with people who are not believers, you know, they don't do what we do here. They may have a lot of figurines. I just don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Because why? By your natural self, you are not better. But it is because Christ has died and he clothes us. You know? He, he, clothed, he put a garment and wrap us up. In theological term, we call this imputation. He imputed his righteousness to you. In exchange, you have imputed to Christ on the cross your filth, your sin, and all your unrighteousness. This great exchange is unfathomable. Don't be so easy to oh, say, I can explain it. Sometimes I make a time to explain. I need the help of the Holy Spirit. Right? And human responsibility to rightly divine the word of God. Fearlessly. Because all men are afraid to offend others. Of course, I'm a nice person. <laughs> I'm joking, alright? I don't offend people unnecessarily. No, 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 I'm not a nice person. I don't know what house I call call. But the thing is, people need to be offended from time to time. Not by what you say, not by what you do, not by the way you say. I'm talking about God's word. When you share the word of God with people, don't just feed on Christ as the Lamb. Speak much on Him also. To make Lamb meaningful. He is the Lion of Judah. Am I right? You see, uh, let, let me tell you. Without black color, we don't know what white color is. Isn't it? Without a night when everything is quiet and darkness, we don't know what daytime is. Come on. That's the principle of contrast. You see, the whole truth of God must be communicated right, graciously. Not to live up yourself aloof as though you're higher than others. No, just tell me. This 
in one concert. It's the lion. Right? And all those who are not his will be killed in due time. Oh, but I'm still healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One day you will die. And you will face judgment. So you tell him, God, Christ is the lion of Judah. Fear no one. He's the king. He's the absolute known authority. Then say, God, then bring the person, his, his, his perspective. He said, oh yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm a terrible sinner. Yes. I said, you are. So am I. But now the hope is this. The Lamb of God offer you salvation through the gift of forgiveness. When Jesus died on the cross, He died for those whom He, will, he has called. And those He has called, He will sanctify. Those He sanctified, He will glorify. The word glorified is beyond this one. One day, all of us will die. Either rapture or two other means. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul gave a powerful passage. When you die, some say, you die, when you die, all right, when you, your spirit goes to be with God, but your, your body goes back to ashes. I don't think that is the consummation. I don't think so that is the complete story. I don't believe. Because Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he said, you die. Right? From other scripture narrative, you know, your ash will be cremated or buried, and then in a few days, you will become ashes. But your spirit will be with God but without a body. Would you like to go to a place where nobody can recognize you because there's nobody? Wong Chen said hello to me. I said, where are you? Where are you? Good. There's nobody. That is why Paul gave us the encouragement. He spoke about the consummation. That means the highest point of salvation is you will be given a new and incorruptible body. Such amazing, powerful chapter. You will have a body that will be recognizable. But no sickness. Now we read that, we read that in Revelation chapter 20, 21. In the new heaven, a new earth, there will be no sickness. Sickness is a byproduct of sin. There will be no sickness. There will be no need to weep. Everything on earth has been cancelled out. The presence of God is enough to fill us all up. No sickness, no regret, no sin. Because there is no sin. Sin is not there. The presence of sin is no more. Sometimes I hate, I don't like this word, to be very honest. But I remember in the book of Ecclesiastes, God said, I created everything so that you get to enjoy under the sun. Okay? I've enjoyed many things in life. But in my, deep in my hidden part, I don't like this word. Because humans are just too trapped in their own eyes, you know, going after the world. Our only hope is the community of believers in a church where God's word is taught. You know, we, we accurately divide and be preached to you. Not just here to sing to you. Not just here to play music. I'm not here just to, but just like, and just to, you know, make you feel an inspiration to be successful. 
Does that mean I don't want you to be successful? No. That one, you know, you, you know, we have to work with your career, your your relationship with people, your office at home. That one, I need to talk to you separately. That, but I will still engage the principle in the Bible. But here for this 45 minutes, I proclaim the word of God to you. That Christ, God in Christ, is both the lion and the lamb. Now, now this is the application, right? I, I, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, 5. You see it yellow? Don't let people judge you. Let the word of God, let the word of God judges you. And then you judge yourself. Examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. You know, in my entire ministry, many of us are casual believers. You know casual? Come to church, and don't come to church also. The word of God, while well, sometimes I feel like you know, listening or hearing because certain passage I like, but sometimes I don't like. Casual. You are treating God, the Holy Spirit, and the Son so casual as though they are selling ice cream. You know when we are young people sell ice cream to one of my Hey, I said, never mind. Huh? Then my mother will tell me, tomorrow they will come again. Man. Or like selling satay. Sometimes you have the urge to eat some meat. Because satay is not open. I don't worry that tomorrow will open. If it doesn't open, another person will open a new one. Or go to kacang. The kacang satay is not so good. I used to love kajang sake. I don't know or something. Uh, anyway, I'm not a good eater. I just said, don't go for no one. I cheat I eat whatever they serve. Okay, now, examine yourself, right? I think this is the application. To see whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Then he put the word that's done. Unless, of course, you fail the test. Now, what does that mean? Test yourself. Examine yourself. If your faith is real and true in God, true Christ, by the help of the Spirit, that will surely lead to repentance. But repentance, the word is such a wide thing. What does that mean? Now, let me help you with this. In humility, let me help. Repentance began with your, all your life perspective. Right? You know there is a God. And the God is the God one revealed in Scripture. And God is revealed by His grace and mercy in the person of Jesus Christ. Your perspective must be away, repent from all the idol worshipping. Now, I'm not just talking about Chinese God or Indian God. That's not. I'm talking about when I say idols, it means your career, your car. Your money, your wealth, you yourself <laughs> could be your own idol. You move away all that. And renounce all those idol worshipping. I don't like that. And turn to God. And Christ. How to do that? You begin to learn. You begin to love the word of God. You love the word of God because it is a full representation of who God is. 
or what God wants us to know. Okay? The repentance should lead to your life perspective turning to God and Christ. Now, second thing. You will have a life change thoroughly. Habit, indulgences, all that do not please God. All those are against the teaching and the peace of God. You repent and stop doing right now. You stop sinning, sinning against. You repent. Now again, I don't want to sound as though I'm giving you an excuse, but it's true. Do it with the help of God by His Spirit and the Word of God. Alright, your habit, your, your, your practices, uh, uh, your, 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 your indulgences, whatever. I'm talking about morality. I'm talking about morality. How you live your life. Alright? And from the repentance, your life perspective towards God and you yourself, and morality, moral change. And then next one, forgive one another. Must forgive one another. Don't keep stirring up issue. Now we have, I mean all of you know, if you have a cut or a wound, right? You have a cut and a wound. Do you use your hand to touch it? Do you use your hand to touch it? You don't. You refrain from touching it and stirring it up, isn't it? If you have a wound, you know what you do? You wash it, right? And this the cream, right, right? You bandage it. You do not touch it. It's the same thing. It's the same thing with relationship with one another. Whether it's your family, your sibling, your spouse, your church member, or your friend, or your colleague. Learn to forgive. And when you truly forgive, you mention it no more. You don't touch the wound. From time to time, you raise up the issue again. Do it not. Do it not. Now, I think this is a powerful principle. Whenever I have a cup, I make sure I don't touch it. Why do you think I think it's, it's healed? But to go and touch it, no, then, then it brings me about past again. And, you know. Don't do that. Okay, so examine yourself whether you are faith because true faith will bring about repentance. Your perspective towards God, the Bible, and Christ Himself, and the Holy Spirit. Second, then you repent from your immoral way or whatever they are. And then next, you forgive. Do not touch the world. You know, there's a verse in by right by Paul he said. If Jesus, Jesus remember our sin no more. Wretched so check. Now, sanctification. And then you step into the faith after you have believed. And then you start to grow like a baby. You know, you come to church, you learn the word of God. You listen to the Zoom Tuesday, Thursday, you know, whenever God's word is spoken, communicated to you, listen, with a heart humility. Oh, don't ever think to yourself, this is not for me, this is for Tony. Say, this is for me, not for the other person. This is for me. That's how you read the Bible. Alright, and then. You are being sanctified. You know what is sanctified? I mean, you are being purified slowly. Like I said, it's not about attaining perfection. There's none here. But it's about direction. Training you more with humility, with humbleness. That's why sanctification is not to do, it's to become. Understand? is to become because to do this to do this to do that and do this and do that just to please god you are worshiping an idol 
That's what other religion teach. You must do this, you must do that, you must do this, you must give, you must do this, and then God will be will accept you on that, on that level. This is not the God that we worship here this morning. No raswa. God does not take corruption. God does not take any exchange in the sense that my effort for your grace. Your heart, you cannot make your heart better, but your heart can be changed. So to sanctification is to become gradually but sure by being fed in the word of God constantly. Fellowship with like-minded people. Don't fellowship with those gossipers. You know, don't. It will, it will, it will bring you, it will stray you away. The church is not perfect, that's for sure. Because all of us are terribly bad. How, how can you expect the church to be perfect? But we are here with one focus and one focus of all. Because God has called us, we have responded. Taking our place in the fellowship, we are ready to work with the people here to grow one another. So, to become is not to do. Pastor, to become also we must do, isn't that? Yes, which means, I go deeper, your perspective will change. Right? Your heart has been replaced with a new one. And you begin to be like that, not because you do that. See, whenever, whenever I come across somebody who is, uh, who need the help, to do, to do is different than, you know, becoming. To do it, yeah, I, I must help you. Because why you don't talk to one? I must help him. Maybe I help him, I feel better. Maybe I help him, well, I get some reward somewhere. This is to do. This is to do with mathematical calculation. What is there for me? But to become is different. To become, if you see somebody fall, you go in straight away because why? That is your nature. You straight away say, let me help you out. You, you understand? It's not because somebody will buy you back or a cup of Starbucks coffee. You know? It is because that is your nature. We are talking about the nature of God. Kind, merciful, you know, long suffering. And crying is exactly like that. And being believers, congregation, we are called to be like Him. Oh, I'm about to close, alright? I'm also approaching 70 years so old. So what about Can you slow the time a little? <laughs> Oh, you really. I still remember when I was a teenage playing drum. I still remember when I was in my 20s, sometimes. My 50, 60. Now, how I wish I go back to 60. Time flies. The circumstances, that event, in this world, the air we breathe in, in this life, so much of misery, wars here, wars there. Taylor Swift become a new idol. You know who is Taylor Swift? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not surprised some of you adore her. The one who has just held six concerts. Today is the last day. So many people spend thousands upon thousands just to catch hold of her. Well, I, 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 
I play music quite a lot right now. But not now. So I admire right, when certain tunes are played or even some stage performance. I'm okay. I'm not against it. But definitely not idolizing. Definitely not idolizing. You see, that's why I say I don't like this world. Huh? Oh, Pastor, you are very negative. Not negative, positive in Christ. Because I look beyond a better country. In the book of Hebrew, the writer say a better country awaits us. Isn't that correct? So only next time you'll see it in front of you. Here. <laughs> I like it. You see, uh, with all these mysteries, like yet the Lord said, you live. And then one day, when I want you home, I will call you home. Okay? But all these circumstances, disappointment, hurt, relationship, money, sickness, sometimes uh, it feels it gives us the dread. You know what dread? Scared. Afraid. That as though this life is all that is. Like, I miss your wife or something. You Consistent. I remember every time I walk in, she was smiling. want to pray and say, God, bring her back to life. She will tell you, God, you stupid fool. <laughs> you know, sometimes I pray for those who have passed away. You know, we all, we all be thinking, God, make him alive. Make her alive. If I die, if Dr. Kwan were to do a funeral service for me, don't ever pray that to be resurrected. <laughs> Please. Because why I will raise up and say, no! I definitely would not want to walk back here. No, no serious, I'm serious. Uh, you know, if I'm young, maybe you say I'm boasting. Come on. My, my age is about in, already, already in the twilight. Don't bring me back. Please don't resurrect me. Please, okay? Yet, in no mistaken term, with all the dread we feel inside, maybe this life is all about. Say no, say no. Oh, I don't have money, I don't have children, you know, I, I'm child. You, me and my wife are childless, you know, we don't have children. Sometimes, certain thoughts come here, oh, you say no. How are? Uh? Christine, how are? Uh? When I die, who take care of my funeral service? You sure? You sure? But don't you worry. I'm going to tell you one real, real thing, right? I have a friend who run a funeral parlor. Don't say that. Yeah, seriously. I don't want to mention it, really. He loved me and cared for me so much. One day I was talking about dying like that. He said, Sam, don't worry. He said, don't worry. Sam, it's your time. I will do a good service for you. F-O-C. Free of charge. Serious? <laughs> I'm not joking. I said, I don't want a grand service. See, I, I, don't, I don't want a grand service, man. I don't want. Just wrap up my body and clean it from the hospital. Put me in a coffin, of course. Uh, put me in a coffin and cream me. Cream me. Let me go back to ashes instantly. <coughs> What to do with the ashes? Don't bring my ash back to your house. Because why? You probably will be praying to me. 
No, no, no. Go to Clang. I've done that many times. Take a small bowl or a big one. Let me feed the shark. You don't worry about that. You know what? I have full confidence in what God can do. When the right time comes, right, my, I will be, I will be with a new glory by morning. But all these are said by God's grace, not because I'm good. I'm surely not worthy. I lay hold of His grace and His mercy and kindness. Okay, but yet you know, Mr. Clinton, uh, uh, this is, I hope this is an encouragement you have to to aim here. Don't be so dreadful of uh, your desire that are uh, right. Of course, it's your responsibility to, 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 to deal with life issues. But deep in your heart, remember, Christ in no mistaken term, He said, John 14, 19. Before long, the world will not see me anymore. But you will see me. You know who are the real you? Those who have believed with unshakable faith. Yes, sometimes you may go a little bit wayward. But continue to cling on the world and come back. Okay? And then Jesus said, Because I live. Do you believe God? Do you believe Jesus is still living? Yeah. So, application, convert. Next, you also will live. I look forward to the day. I don't cut you to go, go faster. But I don't mind to be in queue. And I hope that change will happen in my lifetime. But it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Now, would you all please stand? I want to say a prayer to all of you. Okay, now. The message is short. May not be so long as I used to do. But the message